Here I've got a nice combinatorial problem about the number of rectangles or squares that are in an n by n chessboard. So obviously if we solve this for an n by n chessboard, then it's fairly easy just to set n equal to eight and we'll know how many squares or rectangles are present in a normal chessboard. And then before we get started, I know that chess is really big right now. I don't play very much except with my kid a little bit who's really into chess, but I'm interested in maybe playing and like learning some basic te techniques. Any chess YouTubers out there that wanna like maybe teach me how to play and maybe we could do some sort of collaboration, maybe send me an email if you want. Okay, so let's see what I've got here. I've got an N by N chess board and the important thing to notice here is that if we have n squares along each side, then there are actually n plus one line segments. And that's because depending on how you count it, we've got either an extra line segment at the beginning or the end. Okay, so now maybe instead of jumping right into the question of how many total rectangles are there, let's look at the question of how many rectangles of a certain size are there. So maybe we'll look at A by B rectangles. So what do I mean by A by B rectangles? Well, I mean they are maybe A units in width and B units in height. Okay, well, let's start off with an A by B rectangle which starts at the end here. And that means it's going to go for a total of A squares. So I can put maybe an A here to show that it's going at for a total of A squares. And then furthermore, we'll start at the bottom here and it goes for a total of B squares up. So in this setup, our rectangle is shading in this area right here. So let's see, our rectangle is shading in this area. Now, how many such rectangles are there? Well, notice that we can slide this line segment over until we hit the end. We just need to know how many units can we slide it over. In other words, how many choices are there for this end point right here? Notice the number of choices for this end point is the same as the number of choices for this end point. It's just maybe easiest to focus on one instead of the other. Well, notice that since we've got n plus one edges going up from this base edge, there are actually n plus one minus a choices for this last endpoint if we wanna choose a rectangle with side length a on the bottom. And then similarly, for this endpoint up here, there are n plus one minus b total choices. So putting that all together, we can easily answer this question. And that is there are n plus one minus a times n plus one minus b total rectangles of this size a times b. Now we just need to sum over all possible sizes of rectangles. So note, notice that the possible sizes include every possibility of A and B between one and N. So notice we could get a wider rectangle this way or we could get a narrower rectangle this way, just depending on our choices for A and B. So that means we need to sum over this product as A goes from one to M. So let's summarize that up here. So total rectangles. So that's gonna be equal to this double sum as A and B goes from one to N of N plus one minus A times N plus one minus B. But now we can take that double sum into an iterated sum. And this is gonna be the sum as A goes from one to N of N plus one minus A times the sum as B goes from one to N of N plus one minus B. So we can pull this apart into two independent sums because we have this nice product of two terms here. This first product only depends on A and the second product only depends on B. Okay, so that means that equals the sum as J goes from one to N of N plus one minus J quantity squared. 
where I've just changed my index from A and B to J so that I can just write it as this thing squared, noting that this sum and this sum are exactly the same, just with different indices. Now from here, I wanna make a change of index. So let's set M equal to N plus one minus J. And let's see what that does to our sum. So obviously this thing right here is gonna to change to M. That kind of motivated our change of index. And then when J is equal to one, M is equal to N. And then when J is equal to N, M is equal to one. So it changes the order of the summation, but now notice we're still summing from one to N, just in the order reversed, like I said. So that's gonna give us this sum as m goes from one up to n of m. But that's just a, and then squared, that comes down as well. But now notice that's just a triangular number and there's a standard well-known formula for the nth triangular number. I made a short video on that if you wanna check that out. That gives us n times n plus one over two quantity squared. So that's gonna be the total number of rectangles. But now we can tweak this very easily to come up with the total number of squares. And that is instead of looking at A by B rectangles, we'll just look at A by A rectangles. Because obviously rectangles that have width and height the same are exactly squares. So that gives us n plus one minus a times n plus one minus a total a by a rectangles. In other words, there are n plus one minus a squared total squares um, with side length a. Now we just have to add that up, but we don't have any room over there. So let's get rid of that calculation and we'll finish it off. Okay, so we just tweaked our method for counting the number of rectangles of a certain size to counting the number of squares of a certain size, and we determined that for all a between one and n, there are n plus one minus a total squares with side length a. So that means we can easily add this kind of object up from a equals one to n, and we'll have the total number of squares. So let's just do that. So total number squares. So that'll be equal to this sum as A goes from one up to N of N plus one minus A quantity squared like that. But now again, we can do a nice re-indexing just like we did in our last case to make this work out better. And so that re-indexing will be setting M equal to N plus one minus A. That'll have the same effect that we saw before, so we're gonna skip some of the details. That'll leave us with the sum as m goes from one up to n of m squared. But now notice this square is on the inside of the sum, not on the outside of the sum. So I find that pretty interesting. But there's a standard formula for the sum of the first n square numbers. And that is n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. So that's the number of squares that you can form inside an n by n chessboard. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll present a summary. Okay, so let's look at a little summary of what we've done. Our goal was to find the number of rectangles or squares that were inside of an n by n chessboard. And we determined that were, there were n squared times n plus one squared over four total rectangles. But there are two interesting formulas for that. There's one where we can write it as the nth triangular number squared, but it's also equal to the sum of the first n cubes. So in other words, one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed all the way up to n cubed. So just to reiterate, there are this sum as m goes from one to n of m cubed rectangles. And then furthermore, when we counted up the number of squares, we saw that that was equal to the sum of the first n squares. So look, these formulas are fairly similar. I think it's interesting to see that this square 
turns into a cube when you change from squares to rectangles. Or you could also think about this square as moving inside the sum to outside the sum when you go from looking at squares to rectangles. Okay, that's a good place to stop.